John Harper was born to Christian parents on May 29, 1872. It was on the last Sunday of March 1886, when he was 13 years old that he received Jesus as the Lord of his life. He began to preach about four years later at the age of 17 years by going down to the streets of his village and pouring out his soul in earnest entreaty for men to be reconciled to God. As John Harper's life unfolded, one thing was apparent, that he was consumed by the Word of God. When asked by various ministers what his doctrine consisted of, he was known to reply with a simple the Word of God. After five or six years of toiling on street corners preaching the gospel and working in the mill during the day, Harper was taken in by Rev. E. A. Carter of Baptist Pioneer Mission in London, England. This set Harper free to devote his whole time of energy to the work so dear to his heart. Soon, John Harper started his own church in September of 1896. Now known as the Harper Memorial Church, this church which John Harper had started with just 25 members, had grown to over 500 members when he left 13 years later. During this time he had gotten married, but was shortly thereafter widowed. However brief the marriage, God did bless John Harper with a beautiful little girl named Nana. Ironically, John Harper almost drowned several times during his life. When he was two and a half years of age, he almost drowned when he fell into a well but was resuscitated by his mother. At the age of 26, he was swept out to sea by a reverse current and barely survived, and at 32 he faced death on a leaking ship in the Mediterranean. Perhaps, God used these experiences to prepare this servant for what he faced next. It was the night of April 14, 1912. The RMS Titanic sailed swiftly on the bitterly cold ocean waters heading unknowingly into the pages of history. On board this luxurious ocean liner were many rich and famous people. At the time of the ship's launch, it was the world's largest man-made movable object. At 11.40 p.m. on that fateful night, an iceberg scraped the ship's starboard side, showering the decks with ice and ripping open six watertight compartments. The sea poured in, on board the ship that night was John Harper and his much-beloved six-year-old daughter Nana. According to documented reports, as soon as it was apparent that the ship was going to sink, John Harper immediately took his daughter to a lifeboat. It is reasonable to assume that this widowed preacher could have easily gotten on board this boat to safety, however, it never seems to have crossed his mind. He bent down and kissed his precious little girl, looking into her eyes he told her that she would see him again someday. The flares going off in the dark sky above reflected the tears on his face as he turned and headed towards the crowd of desperate humanity on the sinking ocean liner. As the rear of the huge ship began to lurch upwards, it was reported that Harper was seen making his way up the deck yelling women, children and unsaved. Into the lifeboats. It was only minutes later that the Titanic began to rumble deep within. Most people thought it was an explosion, actually, the gargantuan ship was literally breaking in half. At this point, many people jumped off the decks and into the icy, dark waters below. John Harper was one of these people. That night 1,528 people jumped into the frigid waters. John Harper was seen swimming frantically to people in the water leading them to Jesus before the hypothermia became fatal. Mr. Harper swam up to one young man who had climbed up on a piece of debris. Reverend Harper asked him between short icy breaths, are you saved? To which the young man replied that he was not. Harper then tried to lead him to Christ only to have the young man who was near shock, reply, no. John Harper then took off his life jacket and threw it to the man and said here then. You need this more than I do. And swam away to other people. A few minutes later Harper swam back to the young man and succeeded in leading him to salvation. Of the 1,528 people that went into the water that night, only six were rescued by the lifeboats. One of them was this young man on the debris. Before disappearing beneath the two and a half miles of water, John Harper shared, for the last time, the message of Christmas, which, in a nutshell, is that Jesus came to earth to die in our stead that we might be saved. This gospel does not spare us from drowning in an ocean, but it does spare us from a far worse eternal destruction. To complete the story, Harper's six-year-old daughter and her aunt arrived safely in New York, rescued by the Carpathia, and only then learned of Harper's death. And to the credit of the Moody Church, acting pastor Reverend Woolley and a deacon traveled to New York to give them clothes and money so they could return to Scotland. Four years later, at a survivor's meeting, this young man stood up and in tears recounted how that after John Harper had led him to Christ. Mr. Harper had tried to swim back to help other people, yet because of the intense cold, had grown too weak to swim. 
his last words before going under in the frigid waters were believe on the name of the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. We might wonder if it had been better if Harper had lived to preach at the Moody Church and other venues rather than be among those who perished on the Titanic. But God knows best. A hundred years after his death, we are still benefiting from the lasting effects of those final moments before he sank into the ocean. He left an example for tens of thousands of us who would never have heard of him if he had survived. God sees the big picture, we see but a small slice of time. This Christmas, let us renew our commitment to the good news that Jesus came to bring us, and let us share it with our friends. Our witness might not be as dramatic as the closing moments of John Harper's life, but it can be just as sure, just as urgent, and just as confident.